Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome viewers to the NPTEL lecture series on the calculus of variation. This is the 11th uh, lecture in the series. So far we have considered various cases of the functional of the type i which is function of several functions y1, y2 and so on to yn in the following manner integral x1 to x2 f of x y 1 y 1 prime and so on up to y 1 to the m 1 th derivative and then y 2 y 2 prime and so on y 2 m 2 th derivative and so on like this to y n y n prime and so on up to y n m n net derivative d x. Here we have x as independent variable and y 1, y 2, y n as functions of x defined on the interval x 1 to x 2. So, all these y z's are functions from x 1 to x 2 into r sufficiently smooth so that all these derivatives exist and this integral makes sense earlier in the first case we had taken only one function one dependent function y 1. So, our integral was our functional i of y 1 was x 1 to x 2 f x y 1 y 1 prime. Then we considered uh, i of y 1 y 2 y n f of x y 1 y 1 prime y 2 prime and up to y n prime and like that we went to uh, higher order derivatives also and so all those cases were particular cases of the most general functional of this type and so here of course these yz's are satisfying certain boundary conditions satisfy boundary conditions so these were the cases which we had considered and we can here again consider this phi alpha in the form that i of y 1 we just change only one of them and then we consider like this y 2 and so on and y j plus alpha delta y j and keep others fixed and so you will have this x 1 to x 2 f of x y 1 y 1 prime and so on to y n m 1 th and these are fixed. So, only this y j plus alpha delta y j and y j plus alpha y j prime plus alpha delta y j prime and so on up to y j plus alpha delta this is up to m j th derivative for delta y j m j th derivative and so remaining ones are y n y n prime and up to y n m n derivative. So, we vary only one of them and then use the same techniques here and so we put f 
this phi prime alpha at alpha equal to 0 equal to you will have x 1 to x 2 f y j minus d by d x of f y j prime plus d 2 by d x 2 f j f of y j double prime and so on minus plus and plus minus 1 to the power m j d of m j or d x m j of f of y j m j and then you will have delta y j x d x this is put to 0 and so for this j th 1 we will have we will invoke the fundamental uh, lemma of the integral calculus the fundamental lemma of the calculus of variation the fundamental lemma we get this f of y j minus d by d x of f of y j prime plus d 2 or d x 2 of of y j double prime minus plus and so on plus minus 1 to the power m j d m j over d x m j of f of y j m j th derivative this is equal to 0. Here then j goes from 1 to 2 n. So, this is the system we get in this most general case where y 1, y 2, y n and uh, their derivatives of any order are appearing. So, various cases of this we had already considered earlier. So, we will just consider one example in this. So, let us say this is 11.1. So, example is 11.2 is the Now, we take n equal to 2 here. So, i is function of y and z like this and we consider here 0 to pi by 2 x square minus y square plus y double prime square minus z square plus z prime square d x. So, here uh, this y is going up to second order derivative where as z is going only up to first derivative. So, this 11.1 in this case gives two equation the following namely this f y minus d by d x of f y prime plus d 2 by d x 2 of f y double prime equal to 0. That is for the one dependent variable y and the second dependent variable z, we get another equation that is f z minus d by d x of f z prime equal to 0. So, this is the system here in this case we have f which is a function of x, y, z and y prime, y double prime and z prime which is 
x square minus y square plus y double prime square minus z square plus z prime square. So, these two equations will reduce to the following that is minus 2 y plus 2 y fourth derivative equal to 0 and minus 2 z minus z double prime equal to 0. So, here these can be written in this manner that d 4 minus i of y equal to 0 and d square plus 1 of z equal to 0. Solving this, solving this system, we get y of x as c 1 e to the power x plus c 2 e to the power minus x plus c 3 cos x plus c 4 sin x and z x is c 5 cos x plus c 6 sin x. The boundary conditions we use the following that y 0 equal to 0, y prime 0 equal to 1 and y at pi by 2 equal to 1 and y prime at pi by 2 equal to 0. And on z, we will have z 0 equal to 0 and z at pi by 2 equal to minus 1. So, invoking these boundary conditions, we get so y 0 equal to 0 implies that c 1 plus c 2 plus c 3 equal to 0, y prime 0 equal to 1 implies c 1 minus c 2 plus c 4, because this will become cos x and at 0 it will be 1. So, c 4 equal to 1 and y at pi by 2 equal to 1 implies that c 1 e to the power pi by 2 plus c 2 e to the power minus pi by 2 plus c 4 this is also equal to 1 because that is pi by 2 this term will be 0 and so we will get uh, this. And, uh, y at pi by 2 is this and we get finally, y prime at pi by 2 equal to 0 implies that c 1 e to the power pi by 2 minus c 2 e to the power minus pi by 2 minus c 3 equal to 0 and here z 0 equal to 0 implies that c 6 c 5 must be 0 and z at pi by 2 equal to 0 implies that z at pi by 2 equal to minus 1. implies that c 6 equal to minus 1. Now, here we see that this c 4 equal to 1 and c 1 equal to c 2 equal to c 3 equal to 0 
satisfy these equations and C 5 C 6 are there. Hence, we get finally y equal to y of x equal to sin x and z of x equal to minus sin x. So, this is the solution here and we can uh, the curve this will give us a curve in three dimension space parameterized by x and so y as a function of x and z as a function of x. So, that is the situation here. So, th these are two points a and b and this curve will be parameterized by x, y x and z x. So, any point will have coordinates like this. Next, we consider now a more independent variables. So, here we will assume that the simplest situation we will consider is x, y, z and there is a domain here this is d in x y plane bounded domain with sufficiently smooth boundary and on this this surface here any point p on this will be denoted as z as function of x y. So, each point x y here this is the image that is z of x y. So, here uh, we will have the functional of the form it will be a function of z and double integral over d f x y are now independent variables z as a function of x y and z x that is also a function of x y and z y function of x y d x d y. So, that is the functional we would be using here and so what we do here we take now the following situation let us slightly enlarge this. So, here on this domain d we have this surface. So, let us say and then there is a neighboring surface. So, this is z x y and this is z tilde x y. So, these are two surfaces. Now, we consider two surfaces z tilde x y and z x y and define delta z as which will be x y and alpha like this that z x y the tilde x y minus z x y. So, here the difference between that ordinate in the z direction vertical distance will be what defined as at any point x y here and we will write this sorry this we will define delta z x y. like this and then define this z x y alpha as z x y plus alpha delta z x y. So, that is what will be defined as 
the family of surfaces where this alpha lies between 0 and 1. For alpha equal to 0, we get z x y 0 as z x y and alpha equal to 1, we get for alpha equal to 1, we get z x y 1 as z tilde x y and in between we get for alpha strictly between 0 less than 1, we get an intermediate surface So, we assume that these surfaces are smooth enough so that this I Z I z plus alpha delta z are well defined. So, this i z similarly you will have this. So, we define our phi alpha now this integral over d f of x y z plus alpha delta z and then you have z plus alpha delta z x partial derivative z plus alpha delta z partial derivative y and dx dy. We observe that this z plus alpha delta z x is same thing as z x plus alpha is a constant comes out delta z x and which is also equal to z x plus alpha delta z x. So, the variation of uh, the uh, partial derivative of the variation delta z is same thing as uh, the variation of partial derivative of z with respect to x. Similarly, this y will be z y plus alpha delta z y which will be z y plus alpha delta z y. So, now we differentiate this phi with respect to alpha as we have been doing in the case of one independent variable and so we get here f z plus alpha delta z plus into and then this gives you delta z plus f of z prime sorry z x rather. plus alpha delta z x and then you get delta z x plus f of z y plus alpha delta z y delta z y d x d y. Now, here as we have been doing in the single variable case, we shifted these derivatives onto f uh, like here. So, since it is a higher dimensional case, we will invoke Green's theorem here. So, just recall Green's theorem. which 
stated like this that over D, if you have n x minus m y d x d y integral over the boundary of m d x plus n d y. So, if we take here n equal to let us say f into g two functions uh, whose partial derivatives are continuous in d uh, and on the boundary they are continuous. So, you will have an m equal to 0 we get here. Now, here n x n has two functions f and g. So, here n x will be f g x plus f x g and so we will have this f g x d x d y and this term will take on the other side the, this term and so it will be minus g f x d x d y plus the boundary term here because m we have taken 0 and as f g. So, we get integral over this f g d y n is there. So, the f g d y this is on the boundary here. So, this is a integration by parts formula for higher dimension. Uh, here x derivative is there on g, it is shifted on to now uh, f. So, you gain minus sign here and you get boundary integrals here. Similarly, if you take now earlier we took n equal to f g and now we will take m here and n 0. So, n equal to 0 and m equal to let us say h g then we get or you can take minus h g whatever you want. So, we will have this then multiplying by minus we get h g y d x d y and you will have this integral. Now, g h y d x d y and minus this over this g h d x. So, that is one thing then we may need higher order integration by parts formula also which we had already introduced earlier. If we take this m equal to 0 and n equal to f g x minus g f x, then we get d f g x x d x d y equal to g f x x. Now, double uh, shifting gives you plus sign here and plus this boundary terms here f g x minus g f x d y and similarly you take m equal to f g y minus g f y and n equal to 0 we get g f y y d x d y minus 
f g y minus g f y d x. And for mixed kind of thing, we can take m equal to minus of f g x minus g f x and n equal to plus of f g y minus g f y, we get these kind of this double integral over d of f g x y d x d y is now this integral is shifted on to f now. So, g f x y d x d y plus the minus 1 by 2 c f g x minus g f x d x and plus half here f g y minus g f y d y here. So, like this all this here we have now. So, here n x gives you uh, those terms and because here n has derivatives with respect to y. So, n x will give you terms like f of g x y minus g of f x f x y and other ones will cancel here with each other and so you will have and ultimately we have used in this m here and n here and with so these are the integration over domain d whereas this integration over the boundary of this domain d so that is what we get here in this case so we use some of the, these integration by parts formally to get the result here. So, we had arrived at this point here. So, let us call it 11 point, 11 point 2 we have used. So, let us call this as so let us call this 11 point 3 and this as 11 point 4. So, in 11.4, we use uh, this shifting of derivatives uh, like this f g x d x d y equal to minus g f x d x d y plus this uh, integral of f g uh, d y over the bounded term. So, that is what we will use here. So, we have now this phi prime alpha at alpha equal to 0 is taken as f z plus f z x delta z x plus f z y delta z y d x d y. Now, this x derivative this is also as we have already explained that this can be written as delta z x now we will shift this x derivative here using the Green's theorem here. So, if we look at this f z x delta z partial derivative of this with respect to x is f. So, that is del by del x of f z x times delta z plus f z delta z x. So, that is what we have here. So, we will put this f z delta z x as 
f z x delta z partial derivative of this minus this del by del x of f z x delta z. Similarly, for this we have f z delta z y equal to f z y delta z y minus delta y f z y delta z. So, finally, we get this phi prime alpha at alpha equal to 0 like this or d f z minus del by del x of f z x minus del by del y of f z y delta z d x d y and then you have these terms f z x delta z plus f z y delta z y d x d y. Now, this second term here. So, we take in the second term this that is this f z x delta z x and this plus f z y delta z y d x d y. Here in this we take we have in we have let us say n equal to f z x delta z and m equal to minus f z y delta z. So, by this were d. So, we have this is n x minus m y since this is equal to integral over the boundary m d x plus n d y. So, here in this case it comes out to be f z delta z d x minus f z y delta z. So, this should be d y and this should be d x. So, that is what we have here. Now, this is uh, since here delta z equal to 0 on c, because here both z since z x y and z tilde x y pass through the boundary c. Hence, the difference delta z equal to 0 on c. So, so, let us write it in this way. So, since this both z and z tilde pass through the boundary c, we have the difference delta z equal to 0 and therefore, 
this integral over c f z delta z d y minus f let's put bracket here f z y delta z d x equal to 0. Since, this delta z here is 0 on c. So, therefore, ultimately thus finally thus we get this phi prime alpha at alpha equal to 0 as f z minus del by del x f z x minus del by del y f z y delta z is a function of x y and d x d y and this is now should be equated to 0. So, as we have in the case of uh, one variable that fundamental lemma of the calculus of variations. Similarly, we have here the generalized form of the fundamental lemma of the calculus of variation that says that if you have if f is from d to r d closer into r is continuous and this integral f x y g x y d x d y equal to 0 for all g from d closer to r here here d closer means a d union it's a boundary delta d this is the boundary of of r continuous then this f x y is identically 0 on d close. Assume that assume contrary that there exists x 0 y 0 in d we need to take uh, we need to establish that this is 0 on d then obviously, by continuity it will be uh, 0 on d closure. So, here we will say so assume that here we have an interior point this x 0 y 0 such that f of x 0 y 0 is not equal to 0. So, we have the situation here and this is the point x 0 y 0. Such that f is here. So, we can assume that we assume without loss of generality that f of x 0 comma y 0 is positive otherwise we can multiply by minus sign 
wise we work with minus f. So, here this is f of x 0 y 0 and so by continuity, so there is a neighborhood around this. So, by continuity of f in d, we have r greater than 0 such that f x y is positive on n r x 0 y 0, which is here n r x 0 y 0 is the neighborhood set of all x y such that x minus x 0 square plus y minus y 0 square is less than r square. So, it is a open disk of radius small r like this. Now, we define g x y equal to r square minus x minus x 0 square plus y minus y 0 square in n r x 0 y 0 and 0 otherwise. Clearly, this g x y is greater than 0 on or in rather which open n r x 0 y 0. Hence, this integral over d f x y g x y d x d y because outside d it is 0, outside it is outside n r x 0 y 0 it is 0. So, this integral reduces to this and so it is strictly because this is positive f is positive g is positive on this and therefore, we get this a contradiction. So, here therefore, there cannot be any point x 0 y 0 in D. Uh, so, we have f of x 0 y 0 equal to 0, but and so thus f of x y is identically 0 on because x 0 y 0 was any point here, we assumed that this is uh, positive here that cannot be possible and so it should be 0 on this or let us not write this v. Thus, because we cannot have such a situation for any x 0 y 0 in d uh, f of x, x 0 y 0 equal to 0 and therefore, this has to be 0 in this. So, invoking this this generalized form of the fundamental lemma the calculus of variation we get this 
f z minus del by here we invoke this in this this let us call this as 11.5 and so invoking this fundamental in 11.5 we get f z del x of f z x minus del y of f z y equal to 0. Here short notation del x is del by del x and del z del y is del by del y. So, this is what we get here. Uh, this is known as Euler Lagrange's equation, the more general form of Euler equation here. So, now we take various cases, various examples of this. Now, the first example is so in this we will consider i z as this z x square plus z y square d x d y and but the boundary condition is z equal to g x y on the boundary del d. Here you have f x y z z x z y as z x square plus z y square and so uh, we f z minus uh, del by del x of f z x minus del y of f z y equal to 0 implies that z x x plus z y y equal to 0. So, this is in d and z equal to g x y on d. So, this is a Laplace of z equal to 0 in d and z equal to 0 g on delta d is known as Drickle problem. So, what it says that if Drickle problem has a solution then it uh, minimize it optimizes the this functional. So, this will be the general feature which we will consider in the next lecture. Thank you very much for viewing this.